All right, welcome back. Episode 141 of Chaotically Intolerant. Mike is back. We are now the first official Sunday of no football. It didn't feel right. Didn't it felt gross? NBA All Star Game not a good doesn't even supplement for doesn't it. even count. Don't even talk to me about the NBA All Star Game. Um, but we're gonna give some grades today. We did actually on Monday's episode we covered the article that me, you, and Curtis wrote together, the NFL awards, um, and then we just kind of talked about the mid season, comparing it to the end of the end of the entire season. Today we're gonna do report cards, so we're gonna give everyone a grade. Um, obviously, you can talk. Probably not going to talk too much about the bad teams. We're going to talk a lot about the good teams. Um, I don't know how I want to do this. Do we want to take into? I assume we're going to take into account the whole, the playoffs as well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Would you say yeah, that's too? For that's better. Fourteen yeah. teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's just jump into it. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, the whole thing. Um, let's just start in the AFC East. We're going to start with the Buffalo Bills. They were 11-6. and six. They came back and won the division over the Miami Dolphins. Kind of, you know, out of the, not out of the blue, but kind of back from the dead type of thing. Um, they had a plus 140 point differential and finished the season on a five-game win streak. Where would you put them right now? Um, you know, they, like, they were shaping up to be like a team of destiny. When they went from 6-6, six and six, they beat, remember they beat the Chiefs. Yeah. Off the bye week, and that was their season, basically. Yeah, and then they got the call that normally would go against them yeah. to go their way, and that kicked off a run that got them all the way to, guess what, a date <laughs> with the Chiefs, which turned into a loss. I think, but I think given the level of talent that Buffalo has had on their roster, the level of expectations that they've had, and the way that their season once again came down to some self-inflicted wounds. I, I I don't think you can give them better than a B minus. Yeah, I was going to say like a C plus. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'd be fine with that too. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll do both B minus. Um, I feel like, yeah, I mean, they came in expecting to win the Super Bowl, right? I, yeah. I would say that was a pretty reasonable expectation for this team. Well, I think in the, I, one thing I did like was that in the, in the playoff game, if you look at the four games the Chiefs played throughout the postseason. The Bills were the one team that, for almost the entire game, stayed committed to running the ball. Yeah. They felt like that was their best chance to win, a combination of running it with James Cook uh, and Josh Allen using his legs. And the plan was working great. It was covering up a lot of warts that they had on defense going into that game, which they knew they had to do. Yeah. But then the fake punt, and then the pass protection. The the trying to get Diggs. DeMar Hamlin and come back. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Diggs drops the long pass. And then there's the pressure that Allen misses, possibly an open dig underneath. And then, of course, as Buffalo fans remember from the 90 Super Bowl, wide, wide left. left. Wide right, wide, wide right. right. Yeah, wide right. Wide. I'm sure they've had some wide lefts, too. But I'm sure they yeah. have. Yeah. And, and by the way, just uh, if you look at the um, cap, the Bills project to have the second worst cap situation in the NFL. Ahead of only, well, behind, I should say, or better only than the Saints, but only one spot better than Miami. So we're talking about the AFC East. You've got two teams that are appear to be a little over fifty million over the cap. Yeah, I, I think it's. I've I think I've said this before, but I think it's time for a very soft reset. Soft reset. Yeah. And and there, I mean, you can't. Obviously, you don't get rid of Allen. You don't get rid of those key pieces. But Diggs, he could be gone. I think that's very reasonable to say he could be gone, especially the outbursts. Um, the, I mean, I'm assuming the money. I'm not sure. Well, is he on a new contract? Um, Diggs? Let's I'm not see. sure. Well, I'm looking at the, the free agents here. Four year, yeah, four year, $96 million. When was that signed? Let's see. All right, so he's through right now. He's there through 2027. Yeah, uh, quarterback Allen is a free agent, but we're not talking about Josh Allen. We're talking about <laughs> Kyle Allen. Um, yeah, they have some notable names set to hit the market. Gabe Davis, mm -hmm. um, Shaq Lawson, A.J. Yeah. Epinesa, Taylor Rapp, uh, Tyrell Dodson, mm -hmm. Jordan, Phil uh, Jordan Phillips, yeah. Daquan Jones, Micah Hyde. So Leonard Floyd, I mean, they, you know, they're not going to, with their cap situation, a lot of those guys are 
pretty much all but gone. Yeah. And I think defensively is where they really they I mean they yes, they need to they probably need another big pass catcher if they can get one. Mm-hmm. But they had a lot of issues that were exposed, especially depth wise. Yeah. Defensively. Absolutely. Um all right, so Miami. Mm-hmm. Also in Cap Hell. I would say, yeah. I I mean, they had a fantastic first half. First half of the year. And then just like they always do, that the fish, you know, the fish freeze mm-hmm. and they can't survive in the winter. So it, it's hard to like say they were bad this year because they weren't. They weren't a bad football yeah. team whatsoever. I feel like I would go right in around where Buffalo was. Probably around a like a, a C plus, maybe a B minus. Yeah, I think I think given that Buffalo has had a a more open window, Buffalo fell further below expectations. From mm-hmm. you know, if you said Miami was going to win eleven games, make the playoffs before the year, I think people would have said like that's that's pretty solid. You know, yeah. they kind of backed into the playoffs last year and then injured Tua. Um, but I think given their first half that they left so much to be desired, yeah. and then truly frozen fish at Arrowhead <laughs> in the playoffs. Um, they also have to figure out what they're going to do um, yeah. with some of these, you know, key guys set to hit the market. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew Van Ginkle, Braxton Berrios, Christian Wilkins, um, Jerome Baker. Uh, didn't know, even realize Chase Claypool, the Dolphin. Yes, he was. They <laughs> said he was as big as a fridge. Was what they uh, they said. Yeah. yeah. Um, they tried to turn him into a tight end. Eli Apple. Uh, well, why, but forgetting even the free agents, the guys that they might lose, how do they get better? How do they, yeah. right? I mean, is it just the quarterback? But I think there's more. More to it. But yeah, I think it's like you said, the culture. I don't know, Miami teams, unless LeBron James playing down there. <laughs> but the Heat and the Panthers both made the finals last year, though, so I should probably walk that back a little bit. But it's, yeah. it's the Dolphins. They haven't. I mean, mind me, they haven't won a playoff game since beating the Colts in 2000. They haven't played in the divisional round since 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a stretch when they made. This is just a fun fact. 98. It was 98, 99, 2000. They played three times in the divisional round. They lost 38-3, 62-7. I don't know if you're, you're too young to remember that game. Marino's last game lost 62-7 to the Jags. That's uh, and 27 nothing to the Raiders. So they. I mean. Like they get towards the end of the year, and it, it just it frightens them. I don't know. Yeah, but I'd say yeah, I'd say B minus at best. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll just say that. I mean, the, the Dolphins are just they are consistently like that, and you don't really think about them like that because it's Miami. Mm-hmm. But they are consistently that like sad kind of. You always know they're going to disappoint their fans. Like they always will, and that's like not you can't even say that about the Marlins because. When they go to the world, when they go to the playoffs, they win the World Series. Yeah, like that's, that's their right, thing. That's right. I mean, obviously they lost with the COVID one, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever they, whatever they tried to say that was baseball, it wasn't baseball. And in this not. past year, they lost the wild card yeah. series to the Phillies. But yes, I, I get your point. They have, they do have a championship this century mm-hmm. where the Dolphins have not uh, been to the divisional round yeah. in twenty three. It'll be twenty four years now. Yeah. So, yeah, very disappointing. New York Jets. Mm, Jets. <laughs> So I would say I'll give them an A plus for the first four drives of the game. Yeah, they're looking great. <laughs> now the rest of the the rest of the season, I would I mean the seven and ten was actually really good, but I think we have to look at this in the context of of what this season was, and it was really bad for them. I mean yeah. they just just. I think expectations wise, it was really bad for them. But going seven and ten, they almost beat the Chiefs. They hung in there. Zach Wilson looked competent, competent for Times, for yeah. a little while, um, and that is almost a win for for the Jets, I would say. But um, I'm I'm gonna stick like maybe a C minus. I could even give them a C to be nice, but like a C minus feels right. Yeah, I mean, given the limitations that Robert Sala had, I mean, most coaches wouldn't survive going 4-7-7 seven, and seven in terms yeah. of wins their first three years. But it does feel like the Jets, I mean, they, they finally go out and they think they have a quarterback this year and then a few drives in, all those late snap plans go to waste. Um, they gave up the fourth uh, most sacks in the league. Their pass protection was pretty horrendous. Not as bad as their crosstown rival, the Giants, who gave up 85. They gave up 64. Um, whoever 
was back there this year was going to have was going to be running for his life. Um, I still think they would have done better. They would have been a contending team at least with Rodgers. Yeah. But I think I mean if they're going to ride with Rodgers because he's under contract one more year, I think they they have to invest in their offensive line. In fact, I think that's where they got to go with their first pick um, because I think they have a lot of skill position players probably coming off the board yeah. early. They could get probably the best or second best offensive lineman. I would I would give them. Yeah, I give them a C minus only because only because their offense was so brutal to watch. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I mean, the fact that they won seven games and they beat the Bills. Remember, after Rodgers yeah. went down in that game, um, you said it. They kept the Chiefs. Uh, they kept close with the Chiefs. They beat the Eagles when the Eagles were undefeated. The Eagles were they, yeah, they last did undefeated that. team for well a couple hours after the 49ers lost. So yeah, um, a couple yeah. hours after the Colts lost to Jacksonville. <laughs> was, oh, were the Colts undefeated? No, no, God. Oh, oh, no, 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 I was just saying. We, we lost the Jets. No. The Jets have just went. If, if I ask, if you ask anybody, who, when was the last time the Jets had a like a top level quarterback? You'd mm-hmm. probably say Joe Namath. I know Boomer Esiason was there for a little bit, but like a, a true Jet quarterback. I, I am very against Joe Namath. I think he's. I, he wasn't good. Like he just wasn't. If you really go and look at the stats, he threw more interceptions than touchdowns. He had a career losing record. Hmm. He is just the only reason was because of his guarantee. Right. Every athlete is going to guarantee something. Sure. Like that. That's just you're not an athlete if you don't say that. And I don't know. I mean, it was sixteen to seven. Like what? That's not exactly your offensive game. And I understand it was a different game back then. Sure. But well, they're big underdogs. More interceptions and touchdowns and a losing record. Those are the two things. Like a losing career record. At least Eli is five hundred. In his career, at least Eli can say that. Yeah, because Eli's on the ballot coming up. Right, he shouldn't be a first ballot. The, the The Hall of Fame should tell the story of football. You absolutely cannot tell the story of football without Eli Manning, without mentioning those two Giants teams that right. kept the Patriots from winning eight titles, and Tom Brady being like having only one Super Bowl loss. So right. you can't not talk about the NFL without Eli Manning. But is he? Is he good? Is he in the first time around when you tell the story of the NFL? Absolutely not. No. You're gonna say Peyton Manning, he, um, Tom Brady, Joe Montana. You know, I mean, there's another a multitude of guys you mentioned before you mentioned Eli Manning. Right. You mentioned him in the third or fourth time around where you're like, yeah, and then the you know Brady didn't win, you know, X amount. Of, he didn't win for ten years because of Eli Manning. That's it. That's true. That's all you mentioned. And, um, and Peyton Manning. Yeah, Peyton, Peyton, yeah. can't forget about Peyton. But. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I was going to say, you know, Brett Favre just put on a Jets uniform. Michael Vick has yeah. put on a Jets uniform. Which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, I mean, even... And a Steeler uniform. That's can't right. About that. Even, you know, Mark Brunel, but as a backup, and, and they had Flacco for a time. If it Geno Smith, but like, you know, and, and Rodgers basically falls into that same category because he's also, a, you know, late end of career rental, but I, I, they've got to put... They, and I think if they could get another playmaker to compliment Garrett Wilson, I think that would be ideal. Yeah. But first things first, I think they got to go o- O line in the draft. Yeah. All right. And then the New England Patriots. Mm. They, I'm going to be nice, and I'm not nice to the Patriots. I'm never nice to the Patriots, but I'm going to be nice. Your defense was really, really good. I mean, you add a good quarterback and a good receiver to this team, they're. He eight nine wins possibly like a, um, obviously with a young quarterback if you get a better quarterback you're you're looking at a play you're possibly winning your division with how good this defense is I mean this defense they beat Buffalo right mm-hmm. so that defense beat Buffalo and I don't care it's still Buffalo it's still Josh Allen they <laughs> I think they were the only team in NFL history to not give up ten points in three straight games and lose all of those games. That's right. They, they did it against the Colts. Uh-huh. They did it against... There was a Charger game where they lost 6 nothing. Yes. I think it was the Chargers and then... Let's have a look-see. It was... The Giants as well. They right. gave up, Oh, they gave up 10, 10 points. 10-7. to yeah. seven. It was Bailey Zappi and uh, Tommy Cutlets. Yeah. So I'm going to be nice and I'm going to give them a D because of your defense. Uh, I'll give him a D minus because when your offense is that bad, it doesn't matter. How it was your defense so is. hard, so embarrassing, and you would never have thought because you just figured with Belichick there, like yeah, even if they don't have Brady, they've shown they've shown that they can be competent, and yeah. and that you know the first year 
But with Mac Jones, anyway, they made the playoffs. They mm-hmm. won 10 games. Um, but the, the wheels just fell off. Absolutely. And Belichick's out, and this is just... It's embarrassing. So different. It is. It's, it's just weird to see um, Gerard Mayo taking over. But, hey, you know, Belichick was 5-11 and 11 his first year as a head coach with New England. So maybe... Maybe the expectations don't have to be too high the first year. He started and ended horribly. <laughs> yeah, interesting. His two worst seasons, two, you know, were his first and his last yeah. seasons. Interesting. Yeah. To the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let you do this one first. Well, like the regular season was an A. Maybe even yeah. an A+. plus Because, again, it was sexy. The blowouts, the great teams. But... We have to factor in, and, and I'd love to factor in the first playoff game against Houston, which yeah. was a dud of a first half, although the defense didn't give up anything. I mean, the defense was was really good, even against the Chiefs. All oh, year. Yeah. yeah, although I think it was deceptive to look and say, oh, 17-10, but again, like when it mattered, when the Chiefs needed to set the tone, they went right down the field in those yeah. first two drives. So it's kind of like... It's it's almost hard for me to penalize the Ravens for that. I don't I don't think you can, because it's... Because that's should Patrick Mahomes. Points, yeah. That's Patrick Mahomes, and you should again. You should be able to score more than seventeen. If you are in the AFC title game at home, you should be scoring Absolutely. at least seventeen. I don't know how you don't. Um, I would, I would say the, I mean the regular season. Obviously, you win the number one seed. You you get everything you can possibly get. I feel like they still could have done more in the regular season. Losing to the Colts was unacceptable. Well, and that was unacceptable. Yeah, the theme, the theme, that was a rough one. The theme is, has been, and it, and it played true again, that I, I feel like they just didn't, they just didn't, as you like to say, they weren't battle tested. Yeah. They didn't play many close games, and most of their losses were close games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they got into this championship game where it was kind of a slugfest, and all of a sudden, like Lamar had to really, like, they had to play catch up. And it was the same thing against Tennessee a few years ago. In the playoffs, like, that game reminded me a lot of it, a, because it's different because the Titans weren't like a juggernaut or anything yeah. like the Chiefs. But once they got the lead, it just completely—it just felt like everything tightened up for the Ravens. No, no pun intended. <laughs> the, everything in, and so the the playoffs definitely bring them down to an A minus. But it's hard. You look at the numbers; they're great across the board. The defense was fantastic. Jackson was the MVP. They won 13 games. They had a home field. They had a five. I mean, it, and you made it to the AFC it. You made it and you hosted yeah. for the first time in franchise history the AFC title game. And look, ultimately you lost to the Chiefs, which when you also at went this, on to win the Super I think right. that's also important. Yeah, yeah, so it's not that it's embarrassing, it's just very deflating. And it did expose that the Ravens were they still had some issues that just didn't show themselves really yeah. in the regular season. And that's what happens a lot of times, these teams. They, it just doesn't, the warts don't show up sometimes until crunch time. Yeah. Um, the Cleveland Browns. Well, what to say about the Cleveland Browns? Deshaun Watson is just, I don't even know what to say about Deshaun Watson. Um, I mean, Joe Flacco comes in and takes your spot. Hell, uh, what's it, who was the other guy? DTR was a better option. He was a better option in the Colts game than Deshaun Watson. Like, I, I was happy that, I wasn't happy that Deshaun got hurt, but I was like, or that he was thinking about coming back. But I was like, fuck, man. I would really rather see Deshaun right now than DTR, than really anyone else. Because Deshaun Watson looked like one of the worst quarterbacks yeah, I've ever did. seen. And he had, he had a couple, I think he did have a couple good games where he looked a little bit more like himself. But there just wasn't, it, it wasn't there for him. Like, and, and... What can you say about this Cleveland team? I mean, you lose everyone. They still find a way to... They were the best wild card team. Um, yeah. They were... It, it's hard to, like, knock them for what they did. Yeah, I mean... It's they, hard to give them a bad grade. Like, I can't really sit here and give them a, a, even, like, a B. It feels like they should get, like, I'm, an A. I'm giving them an A-. Yeah. minus. Yeah, I think... Two, they gave up 17... I'm sorry, 19 fewer yards per game than the Chiefs. And we saw how good the Chiefs' yeah. defense was. It was an incredible season in mm-hmm. a lot of ways for the Browns, given everything that happened to them, quarterbacks, and the way they won some of those games, yeah. so not what we're used to seeing from the Browns. Un-Browns, like the Hail Mary that pops off the guy's yeah. chest. And, well, they, yeah, they, they lose those games. Of course. Normally. They actually lost a game like that to the Bears back in the day, I remember. So it was kind of funny to see it go their way. Um, the postseason, obviously, 
It was jarring to see a defense that good give up 45 to a rookie. Now, two of them, there were two pick sixes. So, so really the defense wasn't totally to blame, but it, but it just, it all kind of came apart at the seams. Flacco yeah. magic ended. Um, but I, I still think given, because I think it, a lot of it is about exceeding expectations. Stefanski, rightfully won coach of the year. The defense was fantastic. I don't know what, I, I, I mean, I guess they have to go with Watson because they're paying him yeah. so much money. And Flacco's not going to be the long-term answer. And it's good that he, they have an um, insurance policy. But, yeah, I think it was a great season for Cleveland. 11 wins and favored in a wild card. They were favored, right, against the Texans? I think they were. They were. They yeah. were, yeah. You know, I, I, I think I've seen any Browns fan that they have to take him yeah. given their history. I've seen some Daniel Jones for Deshaun. Yeah. Trade oh, rumors no, because no, they no. both have horrible contracts. Right. But you're getting a little bit more talent when it comes to Deshaun. So the Giants may say, we're, we'll take it, we'll see, we'll, we'll ride it out and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And the Browns are like, we just want to get this fucking contract going. Yeah. We, we will take anyone just to get, I don't, I don't know what Daniel Jones has, but I know it's less guaranteed. Right. It's so much less guaranteed. So, I, I, I mean, a lot of people say no because it's Daniel Jones, because they want to jump on Daniel Jones. I wouldn't mind it. I mean, if I if I was a Browns fan, I would say, you know, this has been a cluster fuck of, of an experience with Deshaun. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if I am a Deshaun fan, I would say, well, I want to see how he does. But even if I was a Deshaun fan, I'd be like, you know, maybe it is just good to cut ties. We'll say, stop. Like, we're not doing this anymore, and we'll leave. Yeah. And I think, I, I don't know if Deshaun seems like the guy that would be willing to readjust to go somewhere else. Yeah. I feel like he's just someone that's like, you guys said you give me my money, I want my money. Right. Like, that's it. And I'm, obviously he could show differently. I'm not saying, I'm, you know, not commenting on the guy's character. I'm not sure yet. But from what we've seen, I don't know if he's going to do that. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers, <laughs> can we just give them a perennial, like, B minus? That's just the consistent, like, 80%. Right. They're, they're right yeah. at the 80%. Because... Making the playoffs should get you a beat. Like, that's that's a very... But, like, the way they do it yeah. is just so ugly. And But, again, they made it. Like, they still got there. And even after losing to the Colts, which was a big one that they lost. Like, that was, like, the... That should have been the nail in the coffin for them. Yeah, when they got hammered by the Colts. Yeah, you know? that should, just based on records. And then they ended up finishing ahead of the Colts. That's... Wow. Which is crazy. But they did. So... I would say just a B minus. I think that's about right. I mean, they lost at home to New England and at home to Arizona. Yeah. Both four win teams, I think, or maybe Arizona won five. I don't remember. But Steelers were, it's funny because you look at the top teams in turnover margin and the Giants were tied with the Ravens. The Giants got sacked 85 times. So all that great field position, and then they kept going backwards. The Steelers were tied for third with New Orleans yeah. plus 11. So they, but the question is, do they have their quarterback of the future. It's, I think it's still too early to tell. Yeah. I think you got to give him one year. I'm, I am a proponent of, like, you You really should know within a couple of years. It's not quite like baseball where a guy can bounce around and then suddenly at 31 figure something out and become a great pitcher or yeah. something. And I mean, the Kenny Pickett either is or he isn't, but I do think you need to give him, this. Will be, he'll be going into, what, year three? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah and it's year three. Injuries last year and... Rudolph's a free agent, and they're moving on from Trubisky. So the question is, is there a veteran option out there or someone in the draft that's better than Pickett? I don't think so. What? I mean, like, it, you don't want to blame Kenny Pickett mm-hmm. for his surrounding, I mean, for what he has surrounded, surrounding him. I did not word that right. Can't blame him for a supporting cast. And, I mean, that supporting cast is Deontay Johnson, who he is hot and cold. George Pickens, who who got really hot at the end of the year. He got hot, but he can't hard. keep his fucking mouth shut. Right. He cannot do that. And Najee Harris, who looks like the slowest, fast like running back I've ever seen, yeah. just cannot move. But somehow he does make it work when he gets cooking. Like, when he gets cooking, he's moving. And Jalen Warren, who, I mean, who knows what he's going to be. That, that could be just a flash in the pan. That could be a Tony Pollard type of thing that hopefully Pittsburgh does not do what Dallas did. And go all in on Jalen Warren, right? Like they did with Tony Pollard. Um, I would really, I really hope they keep Najee Harris and just it just it doesn't make sense why the offense doesn't work. It really doesn't. They 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 
um, they fired their coordinator, Matt Canada, who was like the biggest terrorist in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's pretty much what I heard. Yeah, uh, but they they got better for a little yeah. while, and their defense was good, and Tomlin was good, and they even in the playoff game they hung in there with the because yeah. they were getting blown out. It was like twenty one nothing, and then then it was like twenty four seventeen. Yeah, they uh, quietly uh, were like, up. yeah. So, uh, but. Yeah, once again, Tomlin winning season, double digit wins. At the, it does seem blasphemous. The worst ten win team ever, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> pro, pro, I mean, they have the worst everything ever. Like, yeah. And it's really, I mean, they're the Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, they are a historically very good franchise, consistent. Right. Had three head coaches in their entire, <laughs> or in like the last what fifty years or something like that. Yeah. There's Tomlin, Noel, and uh, Cower. Yeah. Bill Cower. Yeah. So. Like they're perennial, they're perennially very, very good, but they just can't put it together. Ever since, really, probably what twenty nineteen, they really can't get it together. Like twenty twenty, they were that really bad good team. team. Yeah, but we knew who they were. I just I don't understand why none of this is working. Maybe it is a, a Tomlin problem, and you just have to say we need a change of scenery. We need a new guy in here. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're a running team, they're a physical team. I don't think they're, look, their defense is not as good as it was with the Palomalo years and James Harrison. Absolutely Harris. not. That's not, you know. So when we're trying to compare, you know, Kenny Pickett to Ben, I mean, yeah, Ben is certainly better and more proven at this point, but also carried by a lot better defenses. I don't know about a lot better, but better. I mean, they have T.J. Watt now, I get it, but they this is not your steel curtain team, and it's not even your 05 or 08 or 2010 Steeler teams yeah. that made it to the, or won the Super Bowl. So, yeah. Um, and then the Cincinnati Bengals, nine and eight. I mean, obviously going into this season, yeah, we were like they are top three. You know, it's the Bills, Chiefs, and Bengals mm. probably. Um, again, they finished nine and eight, but like. I don't know. I mean, I don't. Re- I can't blame them for the nine and eight because you lose Joe Burrow. That's your, that's your big piece. Like that is the number one. That's your make or break it. I, I, I don't want to blame them, but I also want to blame them because, why are you not more prepared for a Joe Burrow injury? I guess. I mean, Jake Browning was very good. He played pretty well, yeah. But the Chiefs. What What's so good about the Chiefs and what was so good about the Patriots is they did have the contingency plan. For when Brady goes down, like the year Brady went down, they went eleven and five, Castle. and the only reason they didn't go to the playoffs was because their division was or the wild card was really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I look if the Chiefs had to go with Chad Henney for a whole year and he's retired now, but if they had to, they're not the Chiefs. They're dead. no, no, they're not. And and um, Blaine Gabbard, oh boy. Um, the Bengals, though, I, I thought the defense was more of a letdown, but because it, it's hard to jump, you know, when Burrow goes out. Yeah. It's hard to really judge. I think Browning was solid. I actually he think was that solid. was not yeah. the problem. I mean, it was the problem not to have Joe Burrow, but... Um, and that that's more of my issue, where it's like you are so reliant on this guy. Like, you are so 100%, like, even if, like, no matter how good, if Browning plays out of his mind, he's not going to live up to what you need right. from Joe Burrow on offense. And, I mean, again, I mean, they're not, the Patriots weren't the Patriots without Brady when Castle came in. Right. But they were still enough. Like, they were prepared with the surrounding pieces. They were more prepared for it. But, again, this was a team that got to the Super Bowl also because of a great defense. They had the second-worst defense in the league last year. Now, some of that you can attribute to not having your quarterback because it affects the defense. But they gave up 375 yards a game last year. I mean, that's just... That's not what we've grown accustomed to seeing. The Bengals have been really good... It's not like Burrow has been winning every game 38 to 36 yeah. for them. You know, their defense is, was a big part of their Super Bowl run. Um, and they actually, and this is, I, think, I find this even weirder, that they only went 9 and 8. Um, you know, they had a plus 10 turnover differential. So they were efficient and had pretty consistent quarterback play through the whole year, but their defense was so bad that they, maybe that it just, it kind of washed that out a little bit. So, I don't know. I, I, I expect them to to be better if they did lose DJ Reader, but he's a free agent. Um, I don't know. I think that's more the head scratcher for the Bengals. So I give him a C, just a straight up C. Yeah, I think a C is pretty fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it again, it's hard to judge these teams when you lose those big pieces. Right. Uh, AFC South, Houston Texans A plus. 
That's it. You win a playoff game. Yeah, you go from three wins to a division champion, um, rookie quarterback. Absolutely. Defensive play, defensive rookie of the year, mm-hmm. and you win the playoff game against, I mean, you kick the shit out of the Browns. Not even just win. Yeah. You kick the shit out of them. A plus, however many pluses I can give, that might be my highest grade. We, um, we owe it to the Texans after yeah. being pretty hard on them yeah. going into the playoffs. <laughs> uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, and I wanted to point out, Houston I mean, does have a, a decent amount of cap space, too. It'll be interesting to see how yeah. aggressive they are this offseason. I, I, am, I think they got to capitalize on this. I was extremely glad to see uh, CJ Stroud hanging out with the Kardashians <laughs> and then also hanging out with Amber Rose, I think. I don't remember. Don't but, know what that is, but bold prediction. You'll see Houston on Thursday Night Football just kick off the season at Arrowhead, just as they were in 2020 after the Chiefs got the Thursday night game. Uh, that's my prediction. You can actually bet. There's a site that actually offers betting lines on it. They have the Chargers as the favorite, and then the Ravens. Oh, I, I really hope I don't see the Chargers. I don't think you see the Chargers. I, I, did, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I don't like divisional matchups to start. No, I think Houston makes the most sense. The networks have to save well, Bengals and Ravens. Hold on. They're not getting the Thursday night game, though, right? Because the Eagles are opening it up. No, that's Friday. But they're, I think they're opening it up on Friday. No, I think they're, they're are they still the doing Thursday. the Thursday? Yeah, because yeah. I, I saw something that said like they're opening up the NFL season with the Brazil game. So well, I'm not I sure mean, they're, they're opening the schedule for the Eagles. Okay. That's what they meant. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars, hilarious, so funny, makes me laugh because the Jaguars fans have been so fucking high on their horse all all off season. We're the best. We are the we are the royalty of the AFC South because we have Trevor Lawrence. Well. I'm going to tell you, Jaguars fans, Trevor Lawrence is not Andrew Luck. Um, he will never save you. Uh, and the Jacksonville Jaguars went 9-8 and eight when this was their division. This Everyone gave them the division before the season started. They were like, "Let's." it doesn't even make sense to play the games. Right. Just, just give it to them, eliminate the other teams, and then we'll see how the Jags fare in the playoffs. Just give them the four seed like the AFC South always gets. Right. Um, they go nine and eight. They blow. I want to say like a four or five game division lead yeah, with like right. They were like five to go. Weren't they like six and two? I think they started six and two or something. I mean, they did the exact same thing the Titans did last year. Okay. They did the exact same thing, and I'm hoping that the cycle will come around to the Colts because Jaguars do it to the Titans. Houston does it. To the Jaguars, mm. and now it has to be the Colts do it to Houston, yeah. and then eventually it's going to come back around, and the Titans and Will Levis will do it to the Colts because mm-hmm. that's what I expect from my sad team. Um, at one point, the Jags were let's see, one they actually they started one and two to start the year because they lost to Houston, but then I think they won. They won one, two, row, right? three, four, five. They it's won like five in a row. Six and two. And then they lost to San Francisco. So they started six and two, lost to San Francisco six and three. Yeah, hammered by San Francisco. And I think that started to kind of they that started was, to leak some oil after that. That was a little bit of the leak. They it looks like they went out, hammered Tennessee, and then they played that really great game against Houston, where Fairbairn hit the um crossbar to tie the game. Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't Fairbairn, was it? I think or was it, was it a Matt Amendola or something? Maybe it was so, Amendola. Yeah. And by the way, their best defensive player is a free agent, Josh Allen. Not a bunch of tough jokes. Yeah. The other Josh Allen. Calvin Ridley, also free agent. Um, they they got to decide about maybe franchising one of those. Those two big names. Do they? Oh, no. Calvin Ridley was the gambling guy. Yeah. I thought they had another guy coming back that was a gambler. Um, at, I mean, you could honestly... I mean, you can point to San Francisco, but then they did go out and kick the shit out of the Titans. Um, you could point to that Houston game as the official, like, they won that game, that was the unravel. That was like, we wanted a high-emotion game against a team that we think shouldn't be here. Right. And now we're doubting ourselves, because then they went and they lost to Cincinnati. They lost. That was a tough one. I mean, and, and Lawrence got hurt in that game. And yeah. He definitely did not look, and he had a shoulder injury, and he did not look right. Well, he shouldn't have come back to play... Against Cleveland. Cleveland. He yeah. should not have come back. Right. And then they lost to the Ravens, Ravens which... That was, yeah. But that was... I think we all kind of knew. It was like, yeah, if they lose this game, it's not that big of a deal. But right. then they lost to the Bucs. They got hammered by the Bucs. They did, right. And the battle the battle for I-4, I think, is what Yeah, they and then they beat Carolina, big deal. But but they looked really off in that last game against Tennessee. And well, they, they didn't... Destiny in their hands. They didn't look good against Carolina. Even though they beat right. them 26-0, they offensively looked horrible. 
right? Because I was I was watching that game very closely. <laughs> but um, this is, I mean, I don't I don't know where you can I don't know what disasters are for uh, Jags fans, but this has to be close to one of the worst disasters they've had. Just collapses in team history. I would give them like, I mean, a D minus. Because the only reason it's not an F because you started the season so well, I guess. I, mean, I, I wouldn't. Get, I wouldn't go that far. I think I'd give them a C minus because I think the expectations were high, but I think realistically there had to be a little bit of a regression to the mean. And I and not to make excuses for Lawrence because I, I, I think he has to take some of the blame, but. I do think that injury, injuries, plural, definitely affected yeah. him a little bit. He didn't look right. His throws were off. I mean, a solid season. I mean, he, you know, he topped 4,000 yards. But it just, maybe it's the same question that the Steelers had. Why didn't that work? Yeah. Know, the Jaguars had weapons. They have what they think is their franchise quarterback. they got a solid running back. Their defense, defense is was good. I think it was a little more middle of the pack than we would have thought. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. You just wonder if, if you're right, did Lawrence rush back and does that, did, does there just become a sense of panic too yeah. that sets in because the quarterback first goes, oh my God, we have to win, like we can't give this guy well, a off. I think, because that happened last year, I think Lawrence did get hurt at some point last year and he rushed back, but they turned it around. Like right. They, it, it was, and I think they were thinking, oh, we're going to be able to do the same thing. But where, I, maybe there was the pressure, maybe there was the pressure of where, kind of the favorites now. Like, we right. can't lose this versus we have nothing else to lose. I do think Doug Peterson's still a pretty good coach, um, but I think he's got to prove that last year was a fluke because if yeah. they have another mediocre season, then you got to start wondering if, if he's the guy. And I like Lawrence, but he I do think he kind of, I don't know if it's just because he's big, there's more of him, but it feels like he's more injury prone. Yeah, I always felt that about Roethlisberger, but the guy was so absurdly tough. He mm -hmm. never got hurt. I mean, he was so big and strong. Lawrence yeah. is big. But you feel like he's just, I don't know, like he's more likely to get hurt than yeah. the other quarterbacks. So. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't big on Houston, or uh, Jacksonville to start the year, too. Yeah. So I feel very validated. I was like, why are we talking about this team like it's well, they, some monster? Yeah, the, the weeks two and three, they had a chance to prove that they were up to snuff against the Chiefs, and they didn't get in the end zone. Yeah. They lost 17-9, and nine, and then they got hammered by Houston. And then they did turn it around, but... At, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to ignore those games, yeah. even though it's even if you win some games after that. Yeah. Um, the Colts. You take this one. What do I say about these Colts, man? I mean, listen, they they. I thought they were going to win five games this year, and they didn't. They they won. They won nine games. Could have won ten. I mean, you you think there's there's a few games where chips fall differently. You're ten, maybe eleven, maybe you win the division. Um, I thought it was going to be a Houston and an Indy race at the beginning of the year. I was like, I don't really see Tennessee doing anything. I thought I didn't think Tennessee was going to be that bad, but I really was not high on Jacksonville. I, I did. I think actually, I'm going to take that back. I did say that Jacksonville would, would win the division, but they would win it at like a nine and eight, eight and nine, bad record. They sneak in. Um, the Colts, I would say. I mean, this is overall a very successful year. I, I would say like an A minus, just because they didn't win that final game. You have to win the final game for me to give an A plus. And it, I mean, obviously, it would have it would have flipped. It, it would have been Houston A minus and the Colts A plus if if that happened. But the Colts aren't beating Cleveland. It's not happening. No, no, I don't think they would have beat Cleveland. I, they they went into that kind of limping a little bit. I give them a. I'll give them a B plus. I think the exceeding expectations. They they just played a lot of fun games. Yeah. Like one of those seasons, I'm sure. Where I mean, the Cleveland game earlier. Yeah. It yeah. was a like one of the most fun games of the year. Well, and the Ravens game was yeah. wild, and the and the Tennessee game with the there was like a block punt, and they and they won it <laughs> two time. two straight blocked or technically the second one wasn't a block punt. It was technically yeah. a fumbled snap that was returned, but we call. It, I mean, we're gonna yeah. call it a block punt. Yeah. I, I, so. I think if you can do that with Gardner Minshew, and I'm curious to see where he ends up because he's free agent, right? I yeah, I hope he goes like, I hope he goes like New England. I think he would work well. I, for some reason, especially with those new uniforms that they have, it's not yeah. the Brady ones. They look right. they look Gardner Minshewish. Mm. I don't know if he'll. I don't know about his ability to play in the cold. I mean, he's. He struggles to get his hand around the ball, anyways. <laughs> I, I just wonder if a team like Pittsburgh would bring him in. 
to com- to sort of compete. They could because he's because Minshew's kind of like the modern Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, you plug him in, but I mean, but he look to his credit, and Fitzpatrick had a year like this with the Jets where he, he can get you through most of almost the whole season. I want to say they won like ten games. Those when, Jets when he was did Jets win ten games, yeah. and this Colts team won nine, and the Jets came up just short the last week of that season. Yeah. And the Colts came up just short, but. I yeah, that would, I, I'm kind of intrigued to see if Pittsburgh brings him. I don't know why. I could just see that. Maybe the uniform thing doesn't work. But it, but I think he, he would. I don't fit. know. I don't know if he would work in that yellow. I don't know if it fit, especially the long hair. The long hair. Yeah, they don't have like that. a beard policy like the Yankees do. Yeah. Right? You know, like Brett Kiesel had the craziest mountain man beard if you look him up. But the um, but he's a tough guy. He's a very like a high energy, but a tough guy. I don't know. If I had to predict where he'd go, that that would be one of my, one of the places I would choose. I think the, the, N- the NFL does not; it can't survive without Gardner Minshew. It can't. Just like it can't, it couldn't survive without Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right. We needed we need those types of guys. The torch has been passed to make it. Yeah, to make it fun, to make it just interesting overall. Like he, he Minshew lives in Naples and plays fucking pickleball in the offseason. season. He lives in a van in Naples. A van. And he works out at like the local crunch or something. And then he goes and plays pickleball against all like the old ladies at the. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It reminds I might, me of. Uh, I might have to venture down. To I was the, gonna say, we yeah. Can, we can, can venture to go find him for that. Yeah. Well, you played with Urban Meyer, didn't you? Was that pickleball? Play, or? play, play one game. Yeah. One game. Yeah, pickleball. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, <laughs> and I, and I uh, it reminds me that there was a pitcher named Daniel Norris with the Tigers. He also lived in a van in the off season. <laughs> and a quirky guy. Um, van life is expensive now. I've I've looked it up. I've I've been curious. Like maybe I could do you know do the show traveling podcast going around different places. It, I mean it's it's like fifty grand to convert wow. a van. I mean if you want it nicer, and I would rather have something nice. To, yeah. You know to do that. So I'm not spending fifty grand on a van, but Gardner can. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully he gets a big contract. I mean he should. He has to get a starting job. I feel like he has to because. The, especially what they did, like what he was able to do be, to be able to come in there midseason when Anthony Richardson was the big shiny new toy. Mm-hmm. And most Colts fans were like, oh, brother, we got to have Gardner Minshew now. Like that, that's, that shows something like that has to show for something right? for him. So I hope he gets a starting job somewhere. Maybe, I mean, hell, he could go to Ma- uh, Vegas. Vegas needs a quarterback. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Though. Denver. Denver, we don't know what's going on Maybe. with them. Um, I mean, you could see Tampa, if Baker leaves, you know. Tampa, uh, New Orleans? Maybe. 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 Yeah, it kind of goes in there with like the Pittsburgh yeah. thing a little bit. So, And then Tennessee. Tennessee Titans. Um, I mean, this was, honestly, I think this is kind of what all the Titans fans expected. I can't imagine they would have expected a great year. Derrick Henry, quietly, very good year. He yeah. was so he was he was second in the league in uh, rushing yards. Wow, which yeah. is insane. He was. I feel like I didn't hear anything from him, but he just found a way to to do it, and it wasn't Derrick Henry esque, but he still did it. Um, I think. I mean, obviously they're going into a big rebuild. I can't imagine they're gonna bring back Henry. They're gonna keep Levis as you should expect, but they brought in a yes man as a head coach. I bet you Vrabel said. Well, I don't know. Somebody probably wanted to rebuild, and the other person, either the owner or the coach, said no. Yeah. And that was the difference. Yeah. Um, I will give Tennessee, and they won six games. Levis had, like, a couple good yeah, showings. Yeah. So I feel like a C- is pretty fair yeah. when it comes to this. That's what I would give him. Yeah. Kansas City. Uh, F? <laughs> The regular season, maybe, yeah. I mean, you could you could games. you could make a case for like a, a C when it comes to the regular season, especially yeah. the way they won those games. Like it wasn't pretty at all. It wasn't Patrick Mahomes esque, but they won eleven games. They won the Super Bowl, so it's an A plus because you win the Super Bowl, <laughs> you get an A plus no matter what. That's just is what it is. Yeah. Well, I I think the defense gets the A plus. I think maybe the yeah. offense gets in A minus or yeah. a B plus. I mean. <laughs> The de- like I just I don't think people were they, I don't think people were aware enough of that going into the playoffs. I know it started to get talked about in the postseason, but even going in, it was like, oh my god, does anyone realize that Patrick Mahomes has an elite defense? Yeah. Like that combination alone, forget the re- not forget the receivers, but 
Yeah. Forget the other issues. Forget the other issues. Yeah. The line was really good. The offensive line, despite all their holding penalties, they found a way to mostly keep Mahomes upright. So they did not have a holding. They've not had a holding penalty in any of the Super Bowls. I, that's a little. I don't know. I don't benefit know. of the doubt. I don't know. It's the benefit of the doubt. I guess so. it really is. Um, but yeah, and uh, we were talking about it when we walked in. I mean, just terrifying to think if they go out and get a big play receiver. Yeah. This goes like Patriots Randy Moss kind of deal. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think between Jones and Snead, if they don't reach a long-term deal with Jones, they're not going to tag him. So then you you wonder about that. But if they do reach a long-term deal with Jones relatively soon, they could tag Snead and maybe still have money to get a receiver. I mean, that's again frightening to think. Yeah. Um, that barring injuries, a three-peat. I mean, they is a favorite for the three-peat, and I know no one wants to see it, and we don't. <laughs> but um, they do have some other guys that. Will depart, but again, it just, does it feel like it matters? As long as they have, you know, Mahomes, Reed, and Kelsey, and yeah. Chris Jones, and a few guys on defense, it feels like they can plug and play. They're, They're going to figure something out. Gay, and, and they still have Spags, and they still have Andy Reed, and it's like... Yeah, they locked him up to a three-year deal. Spags. This past, this past week. Yeah, well, he, I don't think he was a terrible head coach. At least he <laughs> did a terrible job with the Rams. Uh, but I think they locked up their offensive coordinator, too, so they're keeping that. Nagy? That core. Is it Nagy? Well, it's not the enemy, and Aggie was the, was, unless he's the quarterback's coach, I think it's, yeah, and he's the offensive coordinator. No, uh, sure. Then who did they lock up? Because it's Bagnolo. I know, I know they locked him up, but I, they did lock someone else up. Um, oh, Dave Taub, special teams coordinator. That's who it is. That's who I signed. I heard that name. You guys must have been around a long time then. He uh, originally working as this, the, okay, well... They still didn't have Dante. Imagine if they had Dante Hall. It was my. I actually back when the Chiefs were rootable with Trent Green, Priest, Holmes, <laughs> Tony Gonzalez. Dante Hall had an incredibly. He was Devin Hester just before Devin Hester was. That was when returns. I mean, you can still return punts, but that was when kick returns were a big part of. The Congrats game. to Devin Hester on Hall of Fame, by the way. Oh, he, yeah. did, he did get voted in on NFL honors. Good um, for him. I don't know how it hasn't happened sooner. When you are the undoubtedly greatest player at that position. You have to be voted. I, and I want to. I do want to. Unfortunately, point out another thing that the Chiefs have. They, I mean, you've got Justin Tucker, but then Harrison Butker is probably the second best kicker in football. Yeah. Hey, hardcore anti-vax, so he ain't you know signing up for any of the, <laughs> the um, you know Kelsey any Pfizer the, the Kelly, but, Yeah. He hits fifty-seven yarder in the Mr. Super Pfizer. Bowl, <laughs> and um, you know he's yeah. I mean, my God, it just when we were talking about this, like they, it's. It's a little easier to root for a dynasty when they just kind of built from the ground up and came from nothing. Yeah. The Chiefs were always right there. They just kind of needed the Patriots to be out of the way. They needed Peyton Manning to be out. Now it is smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we were talking about how the Dodgers do that in baseball, but like, say what you want. I mean, even when the Patriots started their dynasty, remember they were kind of mediocre for a few years. Yeah. They were good, but they had a horrible year, Belichick's first year. And I was like, where did this come from? 5-11? and 11? And now they're going to win three out of the next four Super Bowls. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to give the Chiefs an A-plus. The head coach before Bill Belichick. Yeah. Pete Carroll. Yeah, of course. Which is the, the most memorable clip from his time there was when, I want to say it was Buffalo, refused to line yeah. up for the extra yeah, point, and they just ran it in. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a <laughs> Hail Mary or something. Or No, it wasn't a Hail Mary. It was a pass interference. Uh, it was very controversial, and the Bills scored on an untimed, I'm sorry, the Patriots scored on an untimed play, and uh, they didn't come out with the extra points, so they lined up, they did the whole proper lineup, and then Vinatieri takes the hand off and runs it out. Imagine that the spread was like, I don't know, but imagine the spread was like three and a half. That, that like, like, you lose you know, that. Uh, I mean, this that's when the NFL rigged thing would yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, like, but no man. social media, you had to call some, you know, bookie who was probably part of the mafia to get your bets in back then. Um, and you know, you call some, you get your scores from the phone line. <laughs> oh my God! You know, like so. Yeah. Um, Las Vegas. Oof. This, I mean, tale of two seasons. Yeah, t literally two seasons. Yeah. You you could do an F, and then I mean, <laughs> you could do like Cotton, a yeah. yeah. Um, I would I would just go with right down the pipe. I, I'm actually gonna give them a C plus because they did give some teams some trouble down the stretch. Like I said, they, like they the tried Chiefs. their best to play with the Chiefs. Yeah. They they did the play spoiler at times. Um, AP gets signed to the to the um, 
head coaching job, so yeah. they make the right decision, and I think that should be a part of their grade yeah. in making that decision. Um, so I would give them a C plus for that. I'll, I'll give them a B minus just for the way that they rallied under. Well, it's sort of like you know um, we like to give second chances in society, and yeah. the Raiders realized finally, better late than never, that they made a great mistake hiring Josh McDaniels as head coach, and hiring Jimmy Garoppolo, now suspended quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, yeah, I hope contract. he gets another job. Yeah, I don't I know. Yeah, I don't think he, you know, wasn't like domestic abuse or anything. It was a substance abuse thing. I don't mm -hmm. know if he was just popping Viagra in the locker room or what, but he he just didn't, you know, he just didn't get the job done for the Raiders. I don't think Aiden O'Connell is the answer. Oh, God. But there's no way no. that they can roll forward. If they're going to be serious, they have to go draft or at least... Hey, maybe Gardner Minshew, like you said. Well, at least to hold down the fort. Kirk? Maybe Kirk. I mean, there, there's a thought. getting $28 million a year, but yeah. I, I, I mean, I think Kirk is staying in Minnesota because they brought him back for a game, and he was shirtless. Oh, shirtless, that's right. That, doing the uh, whatever they do. That Sunday night game do. on New Year's Eve, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the Raiders, yeah, I just... I, look, well, they, Josh Jacobs is a free agent, right? That's a guy I think they got to get back because the Raiders want to have this attitude. They want to run the ball. They want to run hard. And I don't know what kind defense. of money. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what kind of money he's going to command. Um, and he's had a little bit of trouble staying on the field. I mean, he finished twenty fifth in rush yards this year. But he's the kind of guy that, like, when he's healthy and when he's going, I, I'd be curious. I think, yeah, I think. They, as always, for most teams, quarterback's the big issue. But they really, at the end of the year, they play tough against the Colts. Mm -hmm. And I think they ended the year with a win against Denver, if I'm not mistaken. I think they beat the Broncos yes. the last game of the year. They beat so, the Chiefs. Actually, they won. They beat the Chargers and the Chiefs. 63-21 to 21 game. Yeah, so they Although they did lose the game 3 no. Oh, that's right, to the bike. That was the one before they put up 63. Mm -hmm. Right, but, the, but three of the, their last three wins in four weeks were all against division opponents. It's always a good... Good time. And that includes a road win against the team that didn't lose after that. Yeah. So. And the Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Um, Denver. Eight and nine again. Nine uh, and eight. Or, no, eight and nine. Were they eight and nine? Mm-hmm. They lost that final game to Vegas. Right, right. I was thinking they were nine and eight. Yeah. But the it, this was a tale of three seasons. Yeah. The start was horrendous. Sean Payton literally said... I've never seen a worse coaching job, and then actually lost to the Jets. Is lost to the Jets, and also just has a worse coaching job against the Dolphins. Yes, yeah, Scorigami. Yeah. <laughs> That's what. Well, yeah, every time you get seventy, I'm pretty sure it's a score. Yeah, game. and um, then they kind of found their footing. They beat Buffalo, right? They they started right. to. There was a thought of like, oh man, like maybe maybe Denver is going to find it. They rattled off. Five one, straight wins. Five yeah. straight wins, and they lose to Houston in a close one. And then they beat the Chargers in a pretty decisive game. But then that Saturday night game against Detroit was like the, uh, well, the it's over. Yeah, I think the I Christmas Eve night against New England at home, mm -hmm. you know, losing that game. And I think that was the last game Russell Wilson played, right? Because Stidham played the last two games. Yeah. And, and uh, then basically, I think it was... Really, I think it was after that Chiefs game where they said, Russ, you're, we don't want you to play anymore. I think that's when all that discourse started, was after the Chiefs game that they lost back in... Oh, 19 8 that game? 20, or no, when they won, when they won, sorry, after they beat oh, the Chiefs. Oh, well, they beat them. 24 yeah. to 9, that right. was, it was right after that game that I think that started. Yeah, because they had a bye after that, mm -hmm. and then they went in and beat Buffalo. They, I mean, they, a couple of absurdly weird close wins against Buffalo and Minnesota and then they blew Cleveland out. And so I would I would sit like I don't want to be too different from Vegas because they kinda had somewhat of the same season. But I would probably sit at a C minus. Just based on how they handled the Russell Wilson thing at the end. Yeah, I would I would give them a C because it was so ugly in the beginning, but they did start one and five and then they found a way to contend and they it just, yeah, there's a lot of disconnect. I'm not a big Sean Payton fan. Oh, I just I'm not. I, I just don't get, you know, I understand he won, you know, he's a Super Bowl winning coach, which of which there aren't many. I was thinking through this in my head today. What was it, like five, six, maybe seven? Active. Active winning head coaches. And if you just go back, like Tomlin, Harbaugh, McCarthy, Payton, you know, Reed's won a bunch. Peterson's still coaching. Yeah. 
But, you know, there's some of the guys that have won recently are retired. Like, or, Bell, I mean, Belichick yeah, doesn't have a job. Not coaching. That, that covers six of them right there. Arian stepped down. Oh, yeah, I guess yeah. McVay is still coach. So, you know, it's seven or, I think, seven active but, coaches. But so the bounty gate thing just... Just really it did, and just and just how cocky Peyton is now. He's got a you know hot new young wife. He's showing up at Bron- uh, Nuggets games on the side, you know, sitting courtside. He he's just become a little full of himself. And the stuff that he said about Nathaniel Hackett, I thought, even though it was a terrible season for Hackett, I thought that was pretty pretty classic for a coach to yeah. do that, especially an established coach. Maybe you're a young coach, you come in, you're all cocky, like say Jonathan Gannon or something, yeah. say that, and be like, oh, okay, we'll forgive it. You don't expect that from a guy like Sean Payton. It's supposed yeah. to be all class. So I, I don't know. And eight wins. They did beat the Chiefs. They got that winning. They they snapped that yeah. losing streak. But Mahomes had the flu that day. So. <laughs> all right, we're gonna have to get cooking on this because we're already yeah, an hour. Right? Yeah. Um, this is what we do. We we get easy. Yeah. 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 Well, that's podcast. That's yeah. yeah. What's well, football? We we love talking football. Chargers. F F F F F F F so F. So ugly. Um. Staley having a job at the beginning of the year. That's an F. Yeah. That, that right there, you couldn't... And then they didn't get any better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they really didn't. What were the, I, w- I wonder what their wins were. I think they beat, like, Chicago. Yeah, their schedule right here. They beat... Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota, Vegas, Chicago, the Jets. Oh, they started New England 6 nothing, but they, they finished the year 1-8. and eight. So they were 4-4 four and four after they beat the Jets on Monday. Okay, day. so I'm looking at this right now. They... They, I, I remember this now. They hung tough with Tennessee and Miami. I remember that. And then they won those next two. And it was like, okay, they're going to figure it out. Yeah. Like they'll, and then they lose to, to Dallas. Mm-hmm. But that was a close one, too, that Monday night game. And then Kansas City. Kansas City. And, Kansas City. And, then, and then they, they beat the, charge, or the Bears and the Jets. And then it felt like, okay, maybe they'll figure it out. And then I, I remember that Lions game, too. Game, yeah. And then the, the, the Packers game, that was the one where I was like, I officially despise right. ba- Brandon Staley's like yeah. personality as a human being. Oh, he's such an idiot. I mean, the him, fourth down stuff was ridiculous. Him, well, him just saying the defense did their job and they gave up 100 on the ground and 300 in the air yeah. to Jordan Love. He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. The defense did their... I'll never... I will never forget him saying that. Like, I'll, I'll probably say that in like our the ping pong league like press conference. If we lose a game, I'll be like, listen, the defense did their job. I don't know what you want me to do. Right. <laughs> Just thrown under the butt. I mean, the fact that they actually had a slightly better point differential than the Broncos did. It's shocking. We're just... Well, you can assure me Just a terrible... I mean, I, hopefully for them, Harbaugh turns it around. Yeah. Uh, NFC, Dallas, 12-5. and five. Again, yeah. 12 wins every year. <sighs> can I... I'm just going to give them a C because this is the common Dallas Cowboys... Experience. C for Cowboy. Yeah. Exactly. I'll give them a C plus because they had so many yeah, they won blowout the division, I guess, wins yeah. and they were, you know, but then when it mattered, they fell flat on their face yeah. against the Packers. Philly. Mm. Tale of two seasons indeed. How what do I even want to, how do we want to grade that? It's so hard to grade this one because they came in expecting, they did what they expected for 12 weeks, really, because of the bye. Yeah. 11 weeks. They did what they were expected to do, and then they collapsed at the end. So, I would, like, they made the playoffs. But, and, and obviously, like, a lot of Super Bowl hangovers are also expected, too. Usually right. it goes the other way, though. The hangover happens in the beginning, the beginning and, and then they season. figure it out. Yeah. They also had a plus five point differential compared to the Dallas plus 194 right. point differential. And then the other two teams are minus 141 and minus 189. So I don't. I have no clue what to think of Philly. I'm gonna give them like a C minus. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give them a C. Yeah, I think a C minus actually sounds right. I, I think they were winning close games against good teams. I mean, their last couple wins before that uh, three wins. Game. Yeah, before their big collapse started, Buffalo. the three wins were Dallas, and they had a bye, Kansas City, and Buffalo. And they were close wins, but you know when you have that many, when you're ten and one, if you have close wins and you're like five and one, you might be like, yeah, that's a fluke. Yeah. They were ten and one, and then blasted by San Francisco, blasted by Dallas in front of the whole world, yeah. lost that game late to Seattle, escaped the Giants on Christmas, yeah. lost to Arizona, which we watched. They got pushed around in that game, mm-hmm. even though they only lost by four on a late touchdown. Hammered by the Giants, hammered by the Bucks in the playoff game. It, it got really ugly for the Eagles. Really quick. Really ugly. Well, and what's funny is 
they, <laughs> they they played two close games with Washington, too. They did. That is yeah, hilarious to me. Washington seems to be their bugaboo. Right, because they beat them when they were undefeated in 2022. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And the, and the Giants gave them, could have maybe swept them, right? They, the Giants yeah. almost came back from, I think, like 17 down on Christmas. And they kicked the absolute shit out of them week 18. Like, yeah. that was, that was, I don't even think the score indicates how bad it was. Just yeah. how bad that was. And, Setting them up to go into the playoffs and then mm-hmm. the same thing happened against the Bucks. And then the Giants, six and eleven. Daniel Jones gets hurt early. Tommy Cutlets, baby. I yeah. mean and his, his agent in that part. His yeah. agent screwed him over though when it came to that pizza place. Just oh, uh, did you hear about that yeah. story? It's something like he didn't make the appearance or something. Well he or something. after the green after the Green Bay game, yeah, when they won on against Green Bay on Monday night, that double double header. The agent went radio silent on this pizza place and was like, came back and like the next day and was like, yeah, we need more money to come. Uh, and then everyone thought it was, including me, I apologize for this already, but everyone assumed it was Tommy Cutlets, him just pulling the strings when realistically we should know a lot of the stupid things these guys do, probably on their publicist yeah. or their agent. Um, and the agent is also in the Italian American Sports Hall of Fame, which is a shocker. But I guess he's been involved. I think I guess he's been in the game for a long time. We've never heard of him until now. Uh, I guess I think the Giants. Uh, they regression was expected, but not this bad. Well, they dropped off three wins, which that in and of itself is not. But it, you're right. It was the way they gave yeah. up 85 sacks at a minus 141 point differential. Um, but, but at the same time, they won some games they weren't supposed to. They were three and three in the division. They, yeah, well, they, they Washington was two of those wins. But they, but they, yeah, they beat the Eagles. But they scrapped and clawed somewhat. But yeah, the, the fact. So like I said, it was just so bizarre. Yeah. By far the most sacks ever, uh, most sacks in the league this year. I think the most sacks ever given up. But they also led the league in turnover differential, mm-hmm. tied with the Ravens. So I, I'm giving them a C minus because it was still very disappointing given that they won a playoff game last yeah. year. But I I think I expect a little more. I mean, obviously you expect regression with, especially this. I mean, it felt yeah, like because they had a surprise season. Yeah. Last year, yeah. Um, I would say like a D minus because this was it was like so embarrassingly bad. And in the beginning, it was they 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 sort sort of steadied it a little bit. They did. They really figured but, things out. Uh, yeah. Um, kind of the opposite of the Eagles. And then the Commanders. Oh my God, that's an F. Gross. The Commanders also they started two and one. So right. yeah, they, was, they like, finished they were three and three also. Two and twelve. They finished. They finished one and ten. Or one and ten, two. Yeah. Um, so just really, really bad, just disgusting. And, and blown out in most of the in a lot of those games. Not competitive. Yeah. And, and you really feel for Sam Howell because there was times like there was a discussion around Sam Howell of, hey, this guy's actually like a good gunslinger. Like if he really gets the right guy, he could figure it out and just they I don't even know what to say. They traded away Montez Sweat, um, traded away Chase Young, which Chase Young ended up being somewhat of a liability for the 49ers, uh, in the run game, at least. 63 um, points more allowed allowed more than the next worst team, which is Arizona. Their defense was pitiful, doesn't even begin to describe They fired Jack Del Rio, I think, after that Thanksgiving day they lost. They had back-to-back weeks where they gave up 45 to Dallas and Miami. Um, Horrifically bad defense. Yeah. I know they're bringing in Cliff Kingsbury, and they should go quarterback in the draft. But my God, they got to fix the defense. It's embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. NFC North, the Detroit Lions, twelve and five, yeah. first time ever winning the division. Fourteen and six. Cal- I. Cal- I don't want to get. I can't give them an A plus. Right, because we did expect. I I picked them to go to the NFC Championship game, which they did. They did. but had them losing to San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know how to properly grade this. I feel like an A minus is better, especially for the way they lost. Like the way you lose that NFC Championship yeah. game. If you go out there and you get your ass kicked, just tw- you know, for, for the full sixty minutes, it's almost better to me. Right. Because yeah, it's like they'll be like, okay, well, we'll be back. Like we know we'll be back. This was our first time in the playoffs. We're a young team, but like you're. You're there. Like you are literally thirty minutes from the Super Bowl. I know. I know. It's twenty-four to seven at half. But they had a really good season. I think it all yeah. started with the fake punt on the Thursday night game against the Chiefs. Campbell, you know, 
uh, do or die, or, or, or what's the word? A damned if you do. I don't know what the expression I'm trying to say. He was going to just ride or die the whole yeah. way. He was going to do that, and he did it. And it, it true respect. I mean, he, he had no fault in the yeah. yeah in the championship game, but it worked out on a lot of occasions here. It changed the culture of the Lions. And you know, it, if Josh Reynolds doesn't drop a couple passes, who knows? I know yeah. Campbell's under fire because of the bad decisions. They had a they had a fantastic season. Mm-hmm. That you know, if anything, they were they were the ones who were they were trying to almost not get too complacent because they had that division wrapped up and it kind of got a little close the last yeah. few weeks. You don't really realize it, um, but they found another gear. They got that win over the Rams, which they probably didn't deserve to win that game, but they did. And then they beat the Bucks. I think it was. A minus, borderline between A and A minus. Yeah. It was such a, it was just nice to see, and I hope the Lions can prove that wasn't a fluke. Yeah. Um, Green Bay Packers. Uh, again, I would. Are they next year's Lions? Is my question. Yeah. I mean, they they very well could be. Um, I would say this was also quietly a good division. Like they. These teams like yeah. very quietly kind of found their way to win some football games. Right, later in the year. Green Bay just made that run. It's what it's what Green Bay does. They they found a way. I would give them I would probably give them a B plus because I don't want to give them the same grade as Detroit. Now obviously we had completely different expectations for Green Bay. Yeah. But I would say a B plus, you win a playoff game in Dallas. Oh, I mean, a destruction of yeah, Dallas. But yeah. then the way you kind of lose in San Francisco. Well, the Lions can attest to that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean that one. Was, but that at least wasn't like a. It wasn't was a, a seven point breaker. lead. It yeah. was a yeah. He missed a field goal. It was a couple plays that a young team didn't. But again, if Jordan Love, if this is not a fluke, they could be really good next year. I don't. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want anyone to get it mistaken. This was a win of a season. Oh yeah, for this team. Like just because it's a B plus doesn't mean it's not a win. Yeah, um, they and they fired. Uh, what was it their defensive coordinator, Joe, Joe Barry? Was he the defensive coordinator? Uh, I assume not, he was. Sure. Yeah. He, 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 well, now he's the. Uh, yeah, Packers fired the defensive coordinator, right? And they, there were times when the defense looked really bad, but at other times, they had stretches of games where they like took over. I mean, they did a great job again. Remember, they beat the Chiefs on Sunday night. Yeah. That was kind of the moment. That, well, it was Detroit on Thanksgiving first, and then the Chiefs. Yeah. Then they lose to the Giants. Kind of what you expect from a young team, right? They couple really high moments, they beat good teams, and then they let down, and then they got hammered at home by Tampa Bay, and they squeaked by Carolina, but then they they destroyed Dallas. They gave up a ton, too, to Carolina. They gave up 30 points to a Panthers team that got shut out the last two games. So, very up and down, but you're right. A B plus. But they're, are they, they're the youngest team? They were the youngest the team in the league. So that's expected. They've I think got, that is expected. And Jordan Love's got experience now. If he stays healthy... Boy, Aaron Jones, when he was healthy, the yeah. way he ran. I think I'm, I'm going to change. I'm going to go to an A minus because it, the more I talk about it, I'm yeah. like, you know, I think they yeah, deserve it. Yeah, I mean, they, well, look, they finished strong. They were two and five yeah. at one point, three and six actually, and ended the year ten and nine. So yeah. I, I'll, I'll still give them a B plus. Uh, Minnesota seven and ten. This was one of those everything kind of goes wrong, and then obviously you had the pastor not. For a couple weeks, what a crazy time that was. We were we were debating if fucking Josh Dobbs was was like the next quarterback of the right, future, right. Um, but he's not. But I would say seven wins. They started what one? They are started zero and three. Yeah, correct. One and four. Also. One and four. And then um, one five. And then they were six and four. Yeah, but then the wheels kind of fell so off. Three three seasons. Tail of three seasons. Maybe I I think a, a C minus is pretty. Yeah, yeah, fair for the fourth them. quarterback. I don't know why they experimented with that guy Hall against Green Bay. That was a yeah total mistake. failure. Yeah. Uh, and then Chicago. So you have the number one pick, no matter what. That is that's a win in it right there. That is that is the number one thing that you care about this season. Um, they also quietly had a small shot at the playoffs. I mean, they they started horrible. They started zero and four, um, and they also started one and five. Uh, after the Viking game, and um, then two and seven at one point. two and seven at one point, but then they started to rattle some off. They had a that that Commanders game on Thursday night was, I mean they they looked unstoppable. Well, and it was it was, it was it them. was who is who is it either the Bears woke up or the Commanders are just horrendous. Yeah, we figured it out. Right. But um, I mean look, look you look at the games like they beat Atlanta they they. You know, they hung in there with Green Bay in the last game of the season, beat 
uh, Arizona, not an accomplishment. Uh, hung in there with the Browns, obviously. Uh, beat the Lions, beat the Vikings in that horrible Monday night game. Probably the worst Monday night game I've ever seen. Oh, the 12-10, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you lose to the Lions again, but a real close game, and, I mean, you barely beat the Panthers. Um, it, again, it was, I mean, it was just, it was a bear scene. Like, what, what can you say about it? it it's, it's a C- minus for me. You know, you win seven games, that's, that is moving forward for you, right? They won, what, three last year? Two? Three, I think, yeah. Three, I mean, and they, I think they started two and one as well, which was hilarious. Yeah, that sounds right. But look, they ended up as the second best rushing team in yeah. the NFL. A lot of that is Fields running the ball, but second best rushing attack, so they're not, I don't think they're going to keep Fields, but there's something there. There is something there. And, and I think they should keep Fields, but I would understand if you want to move to, to Caleb Williams, sure. which you could see Justin Fields in Tampa, which we'll talk about. Tampa Bay, 9-8. and eight. Baker Mayfield should have won Comeback Player of the Year first yeah. up. Absolutely should have. Um, it's, it's really gross that he didn't. I mean, Joe Flacco played five regular, regular season games. How are we, how are we doing that? Um, but Tampa went, you know, they won their division. They weren't expected to do anything. I would say this is an A-plus for them. Same, they are the NFC Texans. Yeah. Basically. Because, you know, they weren't expected to do anything. They win their division. They even win a playoff game over that Eagles team that just collapsed under their own, under their own gravity, basically. Um, but A-plus for the, for the Bucks. This was their best season since, since winning the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm giving them an A-minus, but I would say that you wouldn't have thought they would have won more games with Baker than Brady. And yeah. they won a playoff game, which they got hammered last year in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They've got some decisions to make, though, in free agency. Are they going to be able to bring Baker back? Mike Evans is gone, probably. Yeah, I can't uh, imagine they're going to be able to. I don't him. think they are. And, you know, guys, they've got Levante David's a free agent, Antoine Winfield. Uh, you know, they're still in that transition period. So you were the one that you're not a big Todd Bowles fan. Kind of with you after that whole thing where he didn't use the timeout. I don't know how he still has a job. But, I mean, they did win a playoff game, and they were... In running, maybe to get to the NFC Championship, so I, I guess you got to give him another year. New Orleans, the other side of nine and eight, oh, such just right, just mediocre, mediocrity. Said that at the same time, jinx, yeah. Uh, just so, yeah, and and they're in cap hell. They have yeah. the, the according to the they've been in numbers. cap hell for the last ten years since the Super Bowl. It feels like every yeah. I mean, it's been I don't know that how years. Is, I mean, is that because that was. Contract? Or something somehow. No clue. Like back paying dead money. I, I mean, I'm guessing they they got to be paying a lot of dead money at this point. If um, yeah, it, yeah. No, well, they are not. Tennessee apparently has the most dead money. It looks like New Orleans actually has not a lot of dead money. So I don't know where who who's their money tied up in all these contracts. They only have, yeah. They only have two twenty eight or two point eight million in dead money. Traquan Smith and Bradley Roby. Um, hmm. I mean, they are dead money. Oh, there's a lot of dead money in their guys and the current players they have, though. Well, I mean, Carr is making an averaging thirty-seven and a half million, and it's he's just. I mean, Marshawn Lattimore is almost twenty million a year. Ryan Ramchick, twenty a year. Kamara is making fifteen million a year. And they don't win anything. No, like these guys win. are. I mean, these guys, their highest paid players, are under contract for a few more years. Taysom Hill is. He's fifty. He's a fifteen million dollar cap hit. <laughs> Taysom Hill. I mean, he's like a Swiss Army knife, but but how much are they? They're not using him enough. Like. They they're not they, I don't know how you get out of this, but I if I were them, you almost just want to say they're gonna have to shed some contracts. For sure. You almost just say like just cut everyone and start from the beginning. Well, <laughs> they're keeping Dennis Allen. They finished strong. I mean, they were in it. They they won their last two games they against battled, Tampa yeah. and Atlanta. They actually won four out of their last five games, but it just I don't know. I just, they're such a hard team to figure out. Yeah, they just. You don't know what they're going to do. They're kind of in that, like, well, bleep or get off the pot. That uh, that yeah. old expression, right? What, what are they going to Shitter, do? Yeah, yeah. shit or get off the pot. I give them a C. Just, just flat. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll say that's... I mean, that's not, they were 9-8, and eight and they you know, had a winning division record. And but, better point differential than, you than know, the Bucks. They, they only gave up 327 on the year, which is pretty good, actually. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean... The, if you look at actually points per game allowed, they are in the top ten 
they yeah. were eighth in points allowed. So it's got to figure out. I, it's just Derek Carr making that kind of money, though. That just it's gross. It doesn't feel yeah. It feels blasphemous. Um, and then Atlanta, C minus. It's yeah, a, just very boring. Right. Obviously, you Destin waste Ritter. Just what using spending too much time with him. At you're wasting your your other guys. You're wasting Kyle Pitts. You're wasting Bajan Robinson. Yeah. I mean, just C minus. Just because they finished one game behind New Orleans, like that's it. Yeah, but just ugly too. I mean, look, the the I think the talk is that they're expected to be a relatively aggressive team in free agency. Yeah. Um, yeah, but well, yeah, but they, they have a new head coach. Yeah, they have a new head coach, but they need Ritter's not the guy. I'm just saying that. No, I mean he's I think not. that's one where you can tell early enough that he really isn't. Yeah. And Heineke's a nice stopgap, maybe even a Gardner Minshew. But my point is, I could see I, Gardner in the Dirty yeah, Bird. Yeah, well, I mean the talk is Fields maybe because it brings some excitement, a little yeah. like Mike Vick kind of you know yeah. running around and. Um, They'll be an interesting team to watch. I'm curious what they do in free agency because the Saints have a lot of like they got to clean up a lot of the mess. Atlanta still has what feels like a, a little window of opportunity, yeah. especially in that division. Carolina F. Thumbs down. F way there. F or F F F F. F. Boy, yeah. Uh, San Francisco. Nothing to say. We're out on Carolina. Right? No, I don't. I don't, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about Bryce Carolina. Young, Frank Reich, first coach to be fired midseason back to back years. A lot of history made. They, first owner to throw water on a fan that we know of. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure owners have thrown a lot of things. I, I'm sure they've done. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, that old joke, you know, uh, the Simpsons said, the presidents, they all get one secret murder. <laughs> NFL owners probably get one secret, you know, assault on fans or something. I don't know. But yeah, ugly season in Carolina. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco, 12 and 5. I'm going to, I'm going to, like, it's, it's well, so weird players, to say yeah. that they shouldn't be an A. To yeah, me, I'm I feel you. like they shouldn't be an A because isn't this the expectation? Yeah, this, this is absolutely your expectation to get there. And you got there. Congrats. You got there. And you blew it again. Yeah. Like you have all the tools. What other tools can they really need? And I you mean, have, yeah. You have a better quarterback than that was supposed to be the missing link. Like, oh, now Purdy's a guy. Like, maybe it was just Garoppolo that made us lose last time. Maybe it's Kyle Shanahan. Go get Falcons twenty eight. Go get Baker Mayfield. Go get you Justin Fields. Pr proponent of that, yeah. I am big on Baker going there because just can you imagine letting him grip it and rip it there with the actual That's weapons they need he has? A little, like like somebody with some juice. You yeah, know? They, he's they solid, but he's not. He doesn't excite anyone. Anna Fry, his lookalike, is more exciting. Have you heard of Anna Fry? No. She's just she's just like she's actually a world star tennis player, but she's a. Um, like high school girl that looks like him. Like Brock and, Purdy or Baker Mayfield? Like Brock Purdy. And she got like all this love on TikTok and stuff like that. But she's more exciting Some facial features. than Brock Purdy is. To me. Yeah, yeah, you know what bothered me the most about the 49ers, and not just that they lost and blew it again to the Chiefs, yeah. it felt like they kind of didn't deserve to be there in the first place, and that both the Packers and the Lions and whoever would have maybe come out of those two teams would have put up such a better... Like, they might have also lost by a field goal to the Chiefs, but it wouldn't have felt like they blew it. Yeah. It really felt like the Niners were just Blue. the bridesmaid and not yeah. the bride. They, they really, like... It just, it's like they didn't want it. I know that they're professionals. They all want to win. But there's a difference between saying you want to win, even feeling it, and actually, like, the Chiefs... Putting it in. ...care like, so much. They do. Brady was obsessed yeah. Winning. Belichick was obsessed. Novak Djokovic is a robot when it comes to just wanting to win. And I think Mahomes and Kelsey and Reed, I think they have that, and the 49ers just yeah. don't. Yeah. And the city doesn't demand that from them the way that Detroit or Green Bay does. San Francisco, I don't know if you heard, by the way, I happen to, happen to be watching this live. Charles Barkley had some choice words for the city of San Francisco. What did he well, say? Because he was talking to Draymond Green, and uh, I want to quote him exactly. But he uh, eviscerates San Francisco for homeless crooks during All-Star Game. And he goes, <laughs> um, because Draymond Green was upset about being in Indiana because of the cold weather, I guess. So he was on the broadcast. And Barkley said, um, you know, if you had a chance to be in the cold or around a bunch of homeless crooks in San Francisco, which would you take? You can't even walk around down there. And Draymond kind of came to defense and said, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And Barkley goes, yeah, with a bulletproof vest. 
So he really yeah, Charles he, listen, Charles tells it like it is. He does. And Draymond came back, he goes, Don't you live in Philly? And he said, No, 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 I I'm in I'm in Phoenix or I'm in Arizona. Or, so he just had to like, you know. Uh, <laughs> Chuck Chuck and his have you heard of the hatred of uh San Antonio, San Antonio women. San Antonio, yeah. those those big those big women down in San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people don't like it, but I think in today's sort of cancel culture, we we actually need more guys. We need a Chuck. We need a so Chuck. Right, and a filter. Big deal. That is, I'm not a big NBA fan anymore. Right, but, but Chuck, though the inside the NBA is one of the most entertaining. It, shows. it is. I don't know why. I love because I I can go months without like watching a basketball game, watch it, and be like. This is fun. It just, it just feels like you're hanging out with those guys. They seem like they actually enjoyed it. Rather, a lot of the other stiffs, you know, like, even you could say CBS or Fox, like, their their show is like, okay, like, they're, the only thing that really got me was when Jimmy Johnson was elected to the Hall. Yeah. And, and they all came out, and Troy Aikman is bawling. Yeah. And I think he's, like, in Green Bay at the time, but, like, he's watching the screen bawling. I was like... That's waterworks right there. Balling because he forgot who Jimmy Johnson was with all those concussions. No, I, I, you're right. That was a nice moment, but I think, yeah, I inside the NBA is by it's far so funny. It's just it, by far. it's like watching like comedians just riff yeah. on each other. Shaq and Chuck, and and then you got the straight men of Ernie Johnson and Kenny Smith. Yeah, it's, yeah. But anyway. and Kenny, Kenny isn't even that much of a straight man. Like he's they, not, they he's get, they can get guy, it, I mean. but they can get it out of him. Like if you, if he's like standard, <laughs> he's, he's going to be a straight. He man. tries to bite his tongue, and sometimes yeah. it comes out. And he's, he's a really good analyst. I like. I feel like you could probably put him over in football, and he would, he would, he'd be it. fine. Yeah. The Rams, ten and seven. You make the playoffs. Everyone forgot about the Rams. Puka Nakua sets almost every rookie record for receiving. So I would say. I would say a B minus. I mean, you don't go out, you don't B-minus. win the playoff game, or sorry, B plus, B plus. Okay. You don't win the playoff game, you know, and obviously, I guess you weren't expected to, but you're going into Detroit. You're Matt Stafford. Like, you have to win that game. Like, you absolutely have to win that game, and you've already won your Super Bowl. But now, like, you see how they're talking about you in the media, and I understand. I'm not, if Peyton, when Peyton's coming, or when the Colts played Peyton in the playoffs, I was like, I'm not a Peyton Manning fan today. I want him in the ground every single play. Yeah. But, you know, I'm sure Peyton took that to heart. Peyton hates, he hates Indianapolis now. Does he? Oh, he, he won't do anything with him. Like, he did. Is that a nurse thing, or is it? I think it's a nurse thing. I, I think it's how they got rid of him. Because he, he, begged, he begged and pleaded to stay there. Mm. And Bill Polian and nurse said, no, we're not doing it. Which... I would do that a hundred times out of a hundred. That is the right move. Like it's a business, it sucks, but that's the right move. Anyways, um, the Rams had. I mean, I felt like they were they were very back and forth this year too. Like there was times where they kind of felt like they were okay. They're not going to do it now. You know, they got they lost. They lose to the to the Bengals and the Rams early to start the year. They started one and three, and it felt like they were dead. And then they beat the Colts in overtime. Disgusting. Um, oh, right, right. It was like a pick six, wasn't it? Or no, 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 it was uh, Puka Nakua over the middle. Oh, I might even think there was a pick six at some point in that game. And then um, you, they actually they lost three straight. They're very streaky. Like, well, one, yeah, they, they finished the year seven and one. They finished it strong, yeah, but they started, they struggled. They really did yeah, struggle. I didn't even realize that they, that they got that hot. I, I knew they were playing better, but I didn't realize. And so the one loss was on a punt return to the Ravens. So they yeah. played great, and... I, I, want, I so wanted someone out there to tell me if this is... It can't be the first time ever, but the last three games the Rams played were all decided by one single point. How often has that ever happened in NFL history? I was just wondering about that. Probably has, but it's got to be very rare. Anyway, um, I think the Rams, I give them an... I almost want to give them an A-. You're right, B+, plus because they did win a Super Bowl two years ago, but yeah. they were not expected to do anything. No. To have these two... And they, they actually have draft drivers. picks this year. They have draft for the first time in a long time. Since the last presidential election. <laughs> right? And, and, <laughs> and surprisingly, I found this surprising, the Rams were actually a pretty good rushing offense. They were actually a top 10 rushing, or 11, I'm sorry, 11th ranked Cameron, rushing offense. Kyron Williams had Kyron a Williams monster. Was a breakout star, yeah. I think he had... He just had surgery, didn't he? To me, he feels like that guy that people are going to take in the first round, and then it's oh, going to be like a historic yeah. bust. Like they're going to be like, they're like, oh, it was like a sure thing that you take him in the first round, and then he just falls apart. Yeah, I mean, 
Look, Sean McVay is still a really good coach. Yeah. I think Stafford's still got a decent amount in the tank, and you give him those receivers. Um, how much longer is Aaron Donald going to play? I guess that's a fair question. Yeah. And the offensive line, you know, after Whitworth, probably could use some reinforcements. Stafford took some shots in that game yeah. against Detroit. But, yeah, I think overall pretty pretty good season. The Rams went 5-1 and one in the NFC West. I know that they beat the Niners when they were resting guys at the end, but that was... I'd say it was a very successful season, and they very well could have beat the Lions. Yeah. But maybe they should have beat the Lions. Mm-hmm. Who knows after that? Yeah. Um, we're going to go quick through these final two. Seattle. Uh, they, you know, I, I almost feel like they just kind of had the bad schedule at the end. You know, they had a real tough schedule. I mean, you have to play Dallas, uh, San Francisco twice. They had to play Philly, which they did win. Um, they had, I mean, they had gone. Like, it, it was, they weren't a good team. They weren't going to win the Super Bowl. We all knew that. I think that was pretty well understood. But I think they could have made the playoffs if they maybe had that earlier in the year, that, that schedule, like that gauntlet earlier in the year. Because they went, after Washington, they went L.A., San Francisco, Dallas, San Francisco, mm. Philly, and then after that, it was pretty easy. You know, you had Pittsburgh, Arizona. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they had a few solid wins this year. They did They did beat uh, Cleveland. Detroit they early. Beat Detroit on the road in overtime, and they beat Philly that Monday nighter with Drew Locke. Uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty mediocre. I still want to give them a C plus because they were 9-8 they were yeah. and eight last year when they made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Geno Smith is solid. He's probably not the long-term answer. No. Um, I, don't, I don't think so. But just, I, just based on his age. The best thing the Seahawks did this year was bring back those previous unis. I was so happy about oh, that. Oh, those are gorgeous. Those with the old, like the more like the longer Seahawk logo and the yeah. lighter Greek just reminded me of the Kingdom Seahawks. So that was a that's an A plus move. Yeah. Even in a C plus season. Uh Arizona. Four and thirteen. Still just, better than I thought they were to, honestly. I'll give them I'm gonna give them a D minus just because they beat Philly at the end of the year. And they, they did and show some Pittsburgh. life when Kyler came. And they and they beat Pittsburgh. Yeah. They showed a little bit of life when Kyler came. So I'm gonna give them the D minus because it's not an F. Like it's it, it was not the Carolina Panthers. I am gonna give them a I'll give them a D. I mean they, their four wins were actually all somewhat solid. Dallas, Atlanta earlier in the year with the uh, Dallas. Philly, yeah. yeah, and I mean look, they kinda got look, they, they had they actually had a tough schedule. If you look at a lot of their losses, it's not like they were playing cupcake teams. You look at their okay, they lost to Washington, but then Giant. I mean the Giants. Well, we didn't know they were bad. Niners, Bengals, Rams, Seahawks, Ravens, Browns, Texans, Rams, 49ers, uh, Bears. And, I mean Seattle at the end. Like they they kind of actually had a tougher schedule. Like, probably with a more moderate schedule, could have won a couple more games. Yeah. Uh, so is Kyler, he's going to be there, right? He's the guy, you think? They draft high. They drafted Marvin Harrison Jr.? <sighs> Man. They're not going quarterback, so. Are they not going quarterback? I don't think they are. I think they have too many other I, areas of need. Yeah, I would say Marvin Harrison. I mean, what what wide receiver do they have right now? Like, Well, they don't have Larry Fitzgerald, yeah. so they probably could go for the next one. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is yeah, he's, he's the best option. That looks like fit to me. Speaking of tough schedules, then we're going to wrap up because we got to get out of here. Um, the Florida Gators, college football fans, they have the hardest schedule in college football history wow. coming up. Were they playing NFL teams? Or what's going on? <laughs> they are playing, actually I can look it up. Well, I'm guessing they're playing Michigan, they're only, Georgia. They're playing, here we go, where we go, 2024 football schedule. They have Opening Miami, then they play Sanford, Texas A&M, Mississippi State, UCF, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and Florida State. Wow. The only, like, non-shit, you know, non-like, great, great team is Sanford. Hmm. I mean, obviously, like, Texas A&M isn't fantastic, Mississippi State isn't fantastic, UCF isn't awesome. But, like, those are still, those are power five teams. That's How did they get so lucky? It happened. <laughs> they're they're going to go six and six and be in the top five. <laughs> That's right, yeah. What, what's that thing they, oh, in college basketball, the RPI or something, yeah. the ratings percentage index. Those nerd, nerd stats, like yeah. e- extra nerd stats. Like, we love the nerd stats, but don't, don't go too nerdy. Right, right. All right, well, let's wrap this thing up. 
Um, thank you all for watching. I know the camera is a little odd. This is a little different, but I rushed out of the house and forgot a lot of equipment. So, um... Plugs? Any, any? I've got one. You got it. Oh, you have a plug? Yeah. Well, uh, just in the spirit of Super Bowl having just passed, Draft America have an article uh, looking at the unsung heroes, offensive and defensive players on uh, Super Bowl winning teams of the 21st century that you probably forgot about, but were very instrumental. All right. Well, go check that out, draftamerica.com. Um, I don't think we have anything major. Just check uh, Mon well, yeah, Monday. I don't know who's going to be on Monday's episode, um, but... Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, everything, and we will see you on Monday.